agent you are. There's a story in that girl for my syndicate. Yeah. Local girl taken for a ride. <laughs> and thump off. <laughs> Come on, Larry. I want to meet her. Time enough. I'll introduce you to her and a half a dozen others. Tonight. <laughs> The horse, is he hurt? <laughs> <laughs> no, are you? Only my antidote. Open up those eyes. Quit sitting 
on those hands. Give in, because here comes Phoebe. Bronco Buster prepares to mount new high note. Maybe, Sherry, I'm falling in love. I might just as well. Who would have thought that after the beating she took this afternoon, she'd be singing tonight? I feel that now hey, Larry, it is how about another little one, huh? Maybe no. Now, that's the suggestion of a gentleman, Monty, all the way. Maybe, yes. I'll do this for you. I'll do that for you. Mm, maybe perhaps I will love you so you will oh oh oh. Mm, maybe perhaps I will show you things you have never seen about love. You know what I mean. I will make you happier than you've ever been. Mm, maybe perhaps I can cook for you. I can sew for you. Mm, maybe perhaps. When you're tired and cross, you will be the boss. Mm, maybe perhaps I will clean and scrub everything so bright. And if we should argue, I'll admit you're right. And I'll stay at home when you are out all night. Mm, Larry, you're asleep. I feel awake. Oh, I mean blind to opportunities. Not blind, muddy old palsy, just lazy. But Larry, there's a lot of flesh on Broadway that's round steak compared to that filly mignon. Why don't you grab her, exploit her, make yourself a lot of jack? A lot of money can be made on a non-stop flight around the world, too. Uh, hey, young lady, yes. you belong on Broadway. No. No, on the stage. Yes. Lady. With your talent and personality, you belong in pictures. Hey, there might be another takeoff in my own metal motor at that. Let's reconnoiter, pal. Okay. Contact. Off. Then I expect to see you on Broadway. Thank you. I hope to see you in Hollywood. Oh, thank you. Oh, what is it? Happy landing. Maybe you don't remember me. Maybe. Oh, I see you do remember me. And if it's of any interest, I'm Monty Cooper, National News Service representative, New York City. Mm -hmm. Mr. Cooper's aching public is just dying to hear about you, Miss Follett. Just relax and tell me all you know. It won't take long. Well, I will tell him what we both know, and it won't take any longer. Well, uh, let's take you girls home and get this yarn right. Check. That's an idea. But my car is in the hospital, and I would not ride no horse. How about a cab? <laughs> <laughs> if you insist. Well, while we're waiting, let's have another little one, eh? If you insist. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm serious, baby. Now, with your uh, assets and my brain, why, well, I could make you a star. Why, oh, I've been telling Monty all evening what a natural you are. Boy, he's in great form. Next thing you know, he'll be telling you how he put over Gwendolyn Miller. <laughs> well, didn't I put roller skates on her Tootsie Wootsies to protect her from the burning asphalt? And how about that milk bath I gave Gabby Parker? <laughs> Boy, how she needed it. Oh, that's nothing to the bath I'll give you. Oh. You do that for me? Mmm, maybe. But I'm only a beginner. Just give me a few days to promote the dough, and the rest will be easy. Are you not rich, Mr. Lowry? Sure. I got ten bucks. 
Oh, but baby, just leave the money in to me. Hey, where are we? Oh, I'm so ashamed. Maisie and I, we live so far away from the city. Suckers, that's who we are. Calgary or Broadway, it's all the same. Here we are, sober, in the middle of nowhere. Say, where do you girls live? Over the hill. Over the hill? Over the hill is the poorhouse. Well, this is our little chateau. Just a sleeper jump from town. Oh, boy. Get a hope we don't get it. Uh, take care of the driver. <laughs> I forgot. I left all my money at the hotel. <laughs> Is that a laugh? <laughs> a very funny laugh. A panic. You wait. And shut off that meter. Never mind turning it off. You won't be long. Hey, you! Of all the dirty double crossing on You've great... been awfully sweet. Good night. And good night to you, Monsieur Larry. Well, there goes your life story. <laughs> what a climax. Twenty miles back to town. And not even a bicycle. Hmm. Well, if we did have, would still be a couple of flat tires. Well... Mr. Larry, it is a long way back to town, no? It is a long way back to town, yes. Twenty miles and you are so tired? Yeah. Yeah, and a bit hungry. Perhaps you would like to sleep here tonight, Mr. Larry. Say, I'm no orphan. Well, there are two nice soft beds for you. In the bar. There's the other half of it. Good morning, boy. Good morning. Did you sleep well, Mr. Larry? He said it. We've got some nice breakfast for you boys at the house. Then you girls are not sore at us. Uh -uh. But no, when you get washed up and all brushed up, then maybe for us we like you better, no? Good luck. Bye. Shall we uh, join the ladies? I tell you, it'll be the greatest thing that ever happened in this town. Just think how Calgary will benefit from the publicity if you people send these two girls to the Atlantic City contest. But why go to the expense of sending two girls? Ah, but if the brunette doesn't click, the blonde will. I'm afraid bathing beauties don't express the real spirit of our city. What's bathing got to do with it? Calgary beauties with the world's best. That's it, beauty, the real spirit of Calgary. 
What a slogan. Oh. I'll take it up with the committee. Success. Do you think they go through with it? Yes, are you sure, Larry? Will they be both of us? Don't worry. It's all set. You'll soon be dodging seagulls. Calgary. Your qualifications have been unanimously approved by the judges. And may I present my personal compliments. Oh, thank you. I guess that sort of bowled them over, huh? I'll bet Earl's getting a kick out of this right now. But Larry, do you think everything is gonna be all right? Baby, just leave it to me. I am Dolores Baker. Mr. Darrell is expecting me. Mr. Darrell is busy now. You may be seated. Thank you. You know, I never had to wait for him like this before. Well, maybe he's busy with someone. Yes, I know, but me and Earl, we're just like that. Oh, back today. Boris, I can't see you. Well, I'll be back tomorrow, Mr. Dow. Can't you give me a minute now, Mr. Darrell? Sorry, Larry, sometime next week. Oh, only a minute, Mr. Darrell. Please, please, I haven't any time now. Oh, but this is important. You've got to listen. Will you be a good boy, Larry, and don't bother me? I've got a new show in rehearsal. Well, that's just why you've got to listen now. I've got a girl that's unnatural. Looks, figure, and how she can put over a number. Just let her show you what she can do, and I'll guarantee you'll grab her. Why, she's got everything, and more. Pep, charm, fatality, personality, real star material. The old familiar refrain. Daryl and me are like that. Yes. Well, Mr. Larry and me, we are like that. Oh, Larry, he has given us a turn down, huh? Come on. Oh, Larry, he must not turn you down. For myself, I don't mind, but for you. Come on. Oh, all right. But we must fight on, Larry, huh? <laughs> oh. <laughs> 
Very funny, Lulu. Yes, Mr. Webster. Sit down. Cigar? No, thank you. What's up? Have you seen these? Yeah, good stuff. Larry Boyd's, eh? Oh, I don't mean the gags, eh? Take another look at that little girl. Pretty cute, what? How about three o'clock? That's just right with me. She'll be here. Well, Earl, I only dropped in to say hello. Uh, yeah. See you later. Give me Larry Boyd. Have him here at three o'clock with that girl. Boy, oh boy, I told you we'd do it. And what's more, he came to us. Oh, Larry, you are marvelous. Hello, Lulu. How do you do, Mr. Vasquez? Wow, who'd have thought he'd be here? Big man? Not so loud, honey, not so loud. Big man? That's putting it mild. He's the biggest shot in town. Yeah? He's the money behind the Darrell shows. Yes, Mr. Darrell. I'll send them right in. Go in now. You stay here, Albert. It means something if Big Bill's going to be in on this. Put your stuff over to him. If we sell him, Darrell's a cinch. Hi. Hello, Abe. Tell Earl I'm here, will you, baby? Mr. Darrell left orders he was not to be disturbed. Yeah, but for me, baby? Not to the president. Mr. Webster's with him. Say, didn't I see Larry Boyd go in there with that girl he's plugging? You did. You mean to tell me Larry is in there with Big Bill? Correct. Your logic is remarkable. Whew. Well, I'll be... So long, baby. She has talent, don't you think? Well, let's see what the girl can do, Larry. This is my accompanist. What was there for me to do? But 
We're going to celebrate it. My place, right after the show. Larry, would you mind phoning something and bringing home quite a crowd? A pleasure, Mr. Webster. Pleasure.
flowers. Oh, thank you, big boy. everybody. We're going to drink a toast. To my own discovery. To Fifi, the bubble of the wine of Broadway. <laughs> May all your little songs have many choruses. I'm so happy. You have been so kind. Thank you very much. And you, Mr. Big Bill. You have been most kind, too. Well, I've enjoyed doing anything I could. <laughs> oh, Larry! In, we knocked them over. I told you I'd land on Broadway. And with both feet, too. Oh, I'm happy. Baby, you ain't seen nothing yet. Are your ears going to be red, you lucky dub? Just heard Wally Mitchell say he was writing half a column about you tomorrow. Come on, let's celebrate, Fifi. Well, all the signs of triumph. Nothing succeeds like success. <laughs> oh, I squawk about that. I'm not. I'm going to use that human weakness to push the kid further up the ladder. Pat up, boy. What can I show you next? Oh, here comes the star. Never mind the star. Let's have some three star. <laughs> <laughs> My dear, I want to have you a little to myself tonight. Oh. Say, Larry, how about a couple of little ones, eh? Go on, help yourself. <laughs> okay, boy. <clears throat> well, George, how about a couple of little ones, eh? Monty, mm -hmm. why can't you do for me what Larry's done for Fifi? Hmm, well, he had something to work with. I'll say he did. Brains. Well, I'm eating fish. Cannibal. You'll have to admit that Fifi had all the makings. Say, who taught her all she knows? I did. Oh, pipe down, will you? Now listen, you get a break. Yeah. A double fracture, probably. Come on, George, how about another little one, huh? Miss Follett, you were superb. How they would love you in Budapest. Oh, but it is not so disagreeable that New York should love me. No. Oh, Maisie. Oh, Mr. Darrell. Hmm? I want you should meet my best friend, Miss William Maisie. How do you do, Mr. Do? Darrell? And uh, Mr. Big Bill Webster. I'm very glad to know you, Mr. Webster. How do you do? Any friend of Miss Follett's is okay with me. Thank you. Maisie, she's very clever. She's been such a great help to me. I think you ought to give her a job, Mr. Darrell. Oh, you think so? Maybe you have a grandmother who could play character parts. Well, that proves at least that she has loyalty. Oh, well, tomorrow at three. Oh, Mr. Darrell, I could do that disrobing blackout number of yours. I have ideas about that. Yeah, so have the police. I'm cutting it out. Oh. Oh. Oh, how are you, Prince? Prince. Uh, yes, uh, Prince. May I present Miss Maisie Williams? Yeah, how do you do? Chaw. And Miss Follett. Chaw. You were magnificent tonight, Mademoiselle. You shall see. The papers will say a new star has flashed in the heavens. Are you a real Prince? The Prince of Wales, he has a big ranch near Calgary. Yes, charming fellow Wales. Shall we? Uh, pardon me, Fifi, I believe this is our time.
you ever hear the old wheeze about the woman being scorned? Why, who's been scorning you, Maisie? You have. Why pick on Fifi to plug when I've had so much more experience? Well, you certainly don't mind her getting ahead, do you? Well, I could use some of the heavy jacks she'll be drawing down. Maybe she can use it, too. Well, I don't see why she has all the luck. I have just as much to offer. <laughs> Larry, I could go for you in a big way. Wasn't there a hideous three-headed monster in Greek mythology? Oh, the three graces. No, the three disgraces. Envy, greed, and disloyalty. You're out of my depth. That might happen to anyone. What are you? Monty's over there looking at us. I think he's coming to ask you to dance. Say, Habit, how about hot putting it, eh? No. Oh, come on. Big Bill Webster presents his uh, protege of 1932. Another member for the Webster alumni. He told me once he was searching for his ideal. Just a big dame, Hunter. Make it two. Congratulations, Earl. You've picked another winner. Don't I always? Say, by the way, Larry, we haven't talked about a job for you yet. Oh, you're too late. Too late? Yeah. What do you mean? I told Lulu to put me on the payroll the day you signed Fifi up. What salary? Only half of what I'm worth. Yeah? How much? Only two fifty. Now. All right. Buddy, make this next one taste like something. say we call it a night. Larry, what must I do? Big Bill, he insists positively he must take me home. And the prince, he asked me too. Oh, you do not like I do that? You object? Why should I object? Oh, I think maybe perhaps this night you do not want me to go with other men. What do I care who you go with? Go with anybody that can get a space in the papers. Get the boys with the bankroll. Guys that can do something for you. And what must I do for them? Well, you're old enough and wise enough to take care of yourself. All right, Larry. Are you ready to leave, Fifi? Yes. I think it is time. Good night, Larry. Night. Oh, by the way, if any of my guests should miss me, do you mind telling me that I'm seeing this fellow at home? Hello, Mr. and Mrs. USA and Canada. Get this one, a certain musical review headliner who not so long ago was a simple wild western flower has any number of male bees hovering about, gathering what honey they may, most conspicuous being a notable political figure and a Russian prince. Oh, I thank you very much for the nice dinner, Bill. And thank you for your delightful company. I'll call you right after the show. We're going to Al Richmond's. Oh, I can't tonight, Bill. No? Well, you see, I have engagement with Larry. 
Oh, <laughs> Larry. <laughs> well, break it. She doesn't want to break it. Well, if I were you, Larry, I should learn to keep out of other people's affairs. This is my affair. Sorry, my dear. I didn't know that things were like that. Oh, Larry, why you talk like that? Why you make Bill mad? Now, he may be running this town, but he's not running us yet. Ah! Uh, ah! Uh, what would Bill think? Oh, Larry, you make big trouble! the royal summons. Hmm? Oh, sit down, Mary. Larry, I, uh, I'm sending you to Chicago. Oh, uh, yeah? Yeah. White wants a good man for his opening there. He, uh, he asked me if I'd farm you out. And since when have you gotten so big-hearted? And do I say yes just because? What do you mean? Okay, forget it. No, Larry, I don't like such insinuations. You mean accusations. You're not kidding me a bit, Al. What's the lowdown? But there's no lowdown. Say, I'm no sucker. What's behind all this? Business. Oh, I see. Big Bill, isn't it? You're a smart kid, aren't you? Well, the Empire State Building doesn't have to fall on me. But don't think that you and Webster can pull any funny stuff with me. You can't railroad me. Well, nobody's railroading you. Well, I quit. Now, what do you think of that? Oh, wait a minute, Larry. You got this thing all wrong. No, I haven't got it wrong. It's a frame-up. You're using big words, Larry. Well, then, in words of one syllable. Big Bill wants to get me out of the way because of Fifi. Larry, I want to tell you something that even a smart kid like you hasn't figured out. Now, stop acting like a prima donna and sit down, Larry. Sit down. Now, Larry, you know that Webster is a power in this town. You know that if he didn't want you around, he could get rid of you in any one of 50 ways, am I right? Get to the point. Big Bill Webster is in love with Fifi. He wants to marry her. Marry her? Exactly. Now, you know how long I've known him. I've never seen him like this before. Larry, he's on the level. Well, what's that got to do with sending me away? Well, Bill figures that you're liable to become something of a menace, you know, gratitude of Fifi and all that. Well? Well, if you're out of town and you leave in such a way that Fifi thinks that you're through with her, you know, well, kid, even if you do care for her, my boy, I know you do. But I think you owe it to the girl to let her have her big chance. Bill's rich. He's worth a lot of money. He can give her everything a woman wants. And you? <laughs> Where do I get my transportation? My uh, secretary has already arranged it. Oh, you were pretty sure I'd go, weren't you? Sure. I know a regular guy when I see one. Of the guy who invented matinees? 
They could throw me out of town. Who's that from? So, he ran out on you. Oh, no, no. But what does it mean? He doesn't say anything about writing. Men never write. All he says is Chicago. No address where I could write him. Hello, Lulu? This is Pippi Follett. Do you know in Chicago where Larry is? Why, no, Miss Follett. I didn't know he'd left town. Mr. Darrell, where is he? I'm sure he doesn't know where Larry is. Oh. Oh. What do you want to bother about that bozo for? With the hot shots of New York at your feet, you worry about a cheap little press agent. But Larry, he is big. He is fine. Of all the saps, you go around like a sick cow over a guy that doesn't know whether you're a woman or a waffle. Oh, but me. Oh, get wise to yourself. Can't you see that that telegram is his manly way of telling you he's through? No, no. I don't believe it. No? Well, time will tell. Time heals all wounds. Did I say heal? Still waiting to hear from that guy? Oh, don't speak about him. Just thought you might want to hear some news. Yes, what is it? Well, Monty heard from a fellow that just got in from Chicago that Larry's been half stewed ever since he got there and running around with anything that wears skirts. Toodaloo, Fifi. Come in. Good evening, Fifi. Oh, hello. Did you get my note? No. No, I get no note. What it say? <clears throat> It says that I want you to sing that song that you sang at Bill Webster's last night. That may be perhaps number. I think it would go great if we put it in just before the finale. Oh, Mr. Darrell, I don't want to sing that in the show. Well, what do you mean? Of course you'll sing it in the show. We'll rehearse it in the morning. Oh, please, one moment, Mr. Darrell. Hmm? You know, I have no publicity since, uh, since... Well, maybe they forget Fifi, huh? Oh, I've got publicity plans for you. I'm going to put you on Park Avenue. Oh, Park Avenue? Yes, I think we should give you a social build-up. Now, a smart apartment, one like uh, Bill Webster's, for example. Oh, Mr. Darrell, but how, please? Simple, my dear, quite simple. You see, Bill's going to Europe, to Paris. Oh, Paris. I think I can get Bill's apartment for you. Of course, I shall take care of all the financial arrangements, and we'll all profit by the publicity. Oh, Mr. Darrell, you are so clever. <laughs> uh, do you uh, do you happen to know why Bill is going to Paris? I? No. He's going to get a divorce. Divorce? And I didn't even know he was married. Well, that just shows you. Not many people know. He hasn't lived with his wife for years. But he's never wanted a divorce before.
I thought you were so straight and clean. I clear out so as not to stand in your way, so as you can marry him. And then uh, you fall for this stuff. You listen to me, Larry. Nothing you can say can make me believe anything but what I see with my own eyes. What a sap I've been. What a sap you've made of yourself. Larry, you are so wrong. Bill Webster doesn't turn over his apartment to a girl for nothing. No, not for nothing. For publicity. Darrell, he arranged it all. And where does Webster come in? He doesn't. He goes to Paris. You know, inside your heart, what you think is not true. I've been nearly crazy, Fifi. Oh, Larry, why you go away to Chicago and never say goodbye? No right, no nothing. I thought I was doing the best for you. How can anything be best with you away? I thought you sailed last night. What's that to you? Plenty. What a setup. Publicity gag. Apartment on Park Avenue. Just a frame up. Get out of here, Larry. Get your things, Fifi. Get out. Chuck, this is Webster. Yeah. Locate a press agent named Larry Boyd. I want a prescription filled. Larry Maisie. You know where he is, Larry? Oh, has he run out on you again? Have you found him? See if he's in a bad way. Where is he? Emergency hospital. Oh. Here, here, what's this? Where are you going? You're on in a minute. Oh, Larry, he's hurt. Yes, but you can't let the show down. Oh, but I can't let the show. Larry's in the hospital. <laughs> must go on. Maybe, chérie, I'm falling in love. I might just as well confess. Somehow, I feel that now it is real. 
Maybe no, perhaps, maybe yes. I'll do this for you. I'll do that for you. Mm, maybe perhaps, I will love you so. You will oh, oh, oh. But love and kisses, you know what I mean. I will make you happier than you ever been. Mm, maybe, sir, I can cook for you. I can sew for you. All well. We go away, huh? Away? Yes. Well, we won't have to do for me to son. This isn't a dream, is it, baby? I think we stick together now. A long time, huh? Maybe for us. 